Hello everyone, I am Dr. Pasna Balu and uh, I welcome you all to Study INS's YouTube series where we uh, every day we are taking a new topic which is a frequently asked exam tested topic in your upcoming INS's gynae oncology exam. I'm Dr. Upasna, I'm a gynecologic oncologist and uh, also the course director for study INSS and study need assess courses. Hardship prepares ordinary people for extraordinary destiny. So in today's session, we'll be covering an overview of INSS, who are we at study INSS and regarding retroperitoneal anatomy. If we look at the INSS timeline, so this is what we uh, have in the AIMS uh, website that the entrance exam is scheduled to be conducted on 24th of October 2024. The results will be out by 30th and then they will be announcing the uh, selected or the shortlisted candidates who will be then uh, appearing for the stage 2 of the INSS exam. We, pro we take pride in uh, in announcing our back-to-back -back legacies uh, every year since the we started with the study INSS course we have created successful candidates and we are lucky to get such hard-working candidates who were in each session we were able the our candidates were able to crack the study INSS uh, exam though it is a very much coveted exam with a very limited number of seats maybe one or two seats per session so dr solan key was with us in april 2023 exam she was the only candidate who could qualify for the exam and had a rank one dr trisha chaturas was with us in october 2023 she is presently pursuing her gynae oncology at INIS at aims rishikesh in April 2024, that is the, this, the last exam of INSS, we had two successful candidates. One is Dr. Shomi Banerjee. She was the uh, she was the rank one general candidate in INSS and she is presently pursuing gynae oncology at AIMS New Delhi. And Dr. Amrita Gaurav is uh, also again another successful candidate from the same April 2024 batch and she is presently pursuing gynae oncology at INSS at AIMS Rishigesh. So we, are, we take pride in announcing our back-to-back -to -back top ranks in this INISS course series. Now if we look at the course structure, we'll be providing you with six live sessions and daily activity sessions will be given. Around 200 questions will be covered. Daily activity topics will cover around 20 questions per day. You will be given all the related uh, related um, guidelines and all the related uh, in information from where to read those topics from. So all the materials will be supplied to you and daily activity topics of around 20 questions per day amounting to around 200, 500 questions in total. Uh, wisdom shorts on pertinent and important topics will be provided to you. We will be given recorded sessions. There will be a dedicated 24-7 telegram group where you can ask the mentors your doubts and we'll be providing you with one All India mock test and an exclusive exam tested recall session will be given. As we all know, recalls are very important in such competitive exams. So the, that will also be taken care of. So we'll be covering cervical cancer, uterine cancer. So this is uh, just a brief overview of the course structure in case uh, in, uh, you need further assistance or you need any further help regarding the course structure, please feel free to comment in the chat box below. So the mega mock will be made active from the 22nd of October as the proposed exam date is on 25th of October. So the mega mock will be simulating the exact the, uh, the exact INISS, uh, the way the, the questions are being asked in INISS. So now let us uh, look at the topic that we have in hand today, that is the retroperitoneal anatomy. So retroperitoneal anatomy or the retroperitoneal spaces is very important because a good understanding of the spaces will help you when you are doing your surgical dissection. Whenever you are doing a gynae surgery or some 
uh, difficult uh, surgeries where you need to mobilize the bla- bowel, the bladder, like deep infiltrating endometriosis, you need to reset out the endometriotic nodule, etc. So in this cases, you can do it with ease without fearing of a urethral bladder or a bowel injury in case you have a good knowledge about retroperitoneal spaces. So though this topic is, is important for your exams, at the same time, it is also important for you uh, as a gynae oncologist or as a gynecologist to be have a good idea about the anatomy of the entire pelvis. So today we'll be discussing about the retroperitoneal spaces. So retroperitoneal spaces are avascular spaces of the pelvis and they are named based on the location of the nearest organs. So there are two types of spaces. One is the lateral space, the other is the median space. So the lateral spaces are paravesical space, paravectal space and the fourth space or the yabuki space the median spaces that is the midline spaces if you see the midline spaces are retro pubic space behind the symphysis pubis and be, be, uh, and before the uh, and in front of the bladder that is the space of ridges vesico cervical or vesico vaginal spaces recto vaginal space presacral or the retro rectal space so uh, paravesical space this is again an important asked question can be asked in your neatuses or analysis exam the paravesical uh, space is divided by the umbilical artery that is the obliterated umbilical artery the internal iliac artery continues uh, or as a obliterated umbilical artery so it is divided by the obliterated umbilical artery into lateral and medial spaces similarly the pararectal space is divided by the ureter or the hypogastric nerve into lateral and medial spaces the hypogastric nerves they run beneath the ureter okay so please remember these two and we will be discussing now each of these spaces now first space is the paravesical space so paravesical that means it is beside the bladder so here if you see in this diagram this is the ureter uterus this is the bladder and the space beside the bladder that is the paravesical space as i already told you the paravesical space is divided by the obliterated umbilical artery into the medial and lateral paravesical space so if you look at the boundaries if you just imagine the space and if you imagine the laparoscopic view of the space you will be able to get an idea regarding the boundaries no need to mug them up or no need to uh, just rot them and you will just get an idea if you simply understand what, where is the space so this is the left para so here is the bladder this is the left paravesical space and we are Behind that is the uterine artery. This is the internal iliac artery, which continues to be the obliterated umbilical artery. So this is the la- medial space. This will be the lateral space. And here, this is the ureter and the pararectal space. So ventrally in uh, front is the superior pubic ramus and laterally is the obturator internus muscles with the external iliac vessels medially is the bladder as i told you medially is the bladder dorsally is the cardinal ligament and the floor is made from the endopelvic fascia the contents of the paravesical space are the umbilical artery because it is the obliterated umbilical artery which divides it into lateral and medial spaces the superior vesical artery the obturator neurovascular bundle this is very important the paravesical space it actually contains the obturator neurovascular bundle the lymphatic tissues mainly the obturator nodes and the accessory lymph obturator vessels Paravesical space is of particular importance while you are doing a pelvic paralymphadenectomy prior to doing a pelvic lymphadenectomy we open up the paravesical space or while you are doing a radical hysterectomy and important to note that you have the corona mortis in this area and the corona mortis is uh, an area where you uh, where you fear because of the fear of bleeding okay because it lies just uh, the corona mortis it lies just over the pubic bone and in case of bleeding it's really very hard because it is directly in contact with the pubic bone now coming to the obturator space the obturator space as i told you it is a space within the lateral paravesical space so this is the umbilical ligament the internal iliac artery as i told you continues as the median umbilical ligament this is the medial paravesical space this is the lateral paravesical space so within the lateral paravesical space you have the obturator space and they have the same boundaries as the paravesical space except the medial boundary will be superior vesical artery the contents are obturator nerve 
this whitish structure is the nerve and above it is the vein so obturator nerve artery and vein loose areolar tissue and lymphatic tissue corona motus as i already mentioned it is a vascular anastomosis between the external iliac or the inferior epigastric inferior epigastric is a branch of the external iliac artery so inferior epigastric vessels and the obturator vessels so external iliac and obturator vessels the anastomosis it usually occurs here, here somewhere over here so corona motus it lies just uh, 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 over the bone over the iliac bone so in so in case of uh, bleeding it's really hard to control the bleeding okay so that's the importance of corona motus now coming to the pararectal space the pararectal space is uh, the boundaries that is beside the rectum the pararectal space as i already told you it is divided by the ureter into the medial and the lateral pararectal space and the medial pararectal space contains the superior hypogastric nerve which is uh, which is very much essential while doing a nerve sparing radical hysterectomy and the lateral uh, pararectal space is actually the space where you can dissect out the uterine artery so coming to the boundaries the boundaries ventrally is the cardinal ligament dorsally is the sacrum laterally is the hypogastric or the internal iliac artery medially is the rectum floor is formed by the levator and i cranially it is the peritoneum of the posterior leaf of the broad ligament and there are two approaches to pararectal space one is the lateral approach usually in oncology we try, we try and uh, dissect things from the lateral approach and the other is the medial approach that is in cases of endometriosis you can also go medially you can stay medially and dissect out the entire thing so if we just look at the anatomy here so this is a much more clearer picture so this is the your bladder these are the lateral pelvic wall that is the external iliac vessels so here is the bladder this is the medial pararectal space lateral pararectal space divided by the obliterated umbilical artery so this is the internal iliac artery the first branch is the uterine artery and this is the lateral pararectal space so please see that the uterine artery is the structure which divides the which separates the paravesical space from the pararectal space so please remember this uterine artery separates the para vesical space from the para rectal space and it this is the ureter this is the lateral para rectal space this is the medial para rectal space so it is the ureter if you dissect on both the sides of the ureter this is the medial para rectal space and this is the lateral para rectal space so medial para rectal space the importance is it contains the nerves which you need to uh spare the hypogastric nerves which you need to spare in case of doing a nerve sparing radical hysterectomy and the lateral pararectal space is important why because here you can dissect out the uterine artery okay so i hope this if you keep this uh, image in mind you will be able to understand the important spaces that is paravesical and pararectal space so as i already mentioned the structure present in between the pararectal and the paravesical space is the uterine artery and the lateral parametric now coming to the latsgo space so please remember l for l that is latsgo is the lateral pararectal space so here again if you see ventrally it is bounded by the cardinal ligament dorsally is the sacrum laterally is the internal iliac artery and medial is the ureter because ureter is the structure which divides it into latsgo and okabayashi space so okabayashi is the medial one and lateral one is the latsgo space okay now coming to the okabayashi space so okabayashi space uh, is when you separate the ureter and the mesoureter from the posterior leaf of the broad ligament so once this dissection is done you will find the medial pararectal space or the okabayashi space which actually contains the nerves uh, the hypogastric nerves which you need to spare during the uh, spare during a nerve sparing radical hysterectomy so ventrally again is the cardinal ligament dorsally is the sacrum lateral and medial will change because laterally it will be the ureter ureter is the structure which divides into medial and lateral pararectal ligament uh, spaces and medially it is the rectum so in case you understand once you understand these things these things will really become very easy for you now coming to the yabuki space so yabuki space is actually a midline small retroperitoneal space which is 
uh, under the retrovesical fold of peritoneum. So some uh, authors do uh, take Yabuki space as a median space also, and some authors have mentioned it as a lateral space as well. So please remember while marking uh, in the exam. So anteriorly you have the ureter, posteriorly is the anterior surface of the ureter. So of the uterus, sorry. So Yabuki is actually a paravaginal space and it is also known as Okabayasi paravaginal space. It is located between the cranial portion of the vesico-uterine ligament and the ureter. It is dissected during nerve sparing radical hysterectomy as it contains the pelvic splanking nerves on their way for bladder innervation. The content is the parasympathetic nerve supplying the bladder and remember while we are doing a nerve sparing radical hysterectomy, we need to first make all the spaces that is first you need to create the paravesical space the okabayasi space the let's go space the yabuki space and after that you can put the clamps and do the hysterectomy now coming to the space of red's ears or the retropubic space ventrally it is the pubic symphysis here you can see this is the pubic symphysis and dorsally it is the bladder peritoneum this is the bladder cranially is the transverse chelis fascia caudally is the anterior urethra pubocervical fascia and the bladder nymph. Laterally, you have the art, uh, uh, arcus tendinous fascia pelvis and uh, lateral limit of the retropubic space is the paravesical space. So it will extend up to the para. So here, this is the red zeus. If you extend it, it will go by the side of the bladder. So this will be the paravesical space. So where is retropubic space important? In cases of anterior exenteration, where we need to remove the bladder as well as the ureter, or as, as well as the uterus. Now coming to the vesico-vaginal space or the vesico-cervical space. So vesico-cervical or vesico-vaginal as the name indicates, it is the space between the bladder and the cervix or the vagina. So ventrally it will be the bladder, dorsally it will be the vagina or cervix, cranially the peritoneal reflection between dome of bladder and the lower uterine segment, caudally it is the junction of the proximal and the middle third of the urethra. Laterally, you have the vesico-uterine ligament and the lateral limit of the retropubic space is the, again the paravesical space. As for space of red bears, similarly here also in vesico-vaginal space, the lateral limit is the paravesical space. It is actually the anterior cul-de-sac and the dissection of the vesico-uterine space is important uh, and should be performed. Uh, medially as lateral if you dissect out it laterally so you should be uh, you should be dissecting it out uh, medially if you uh, in case you dissect it out laterally it may lead to uh, vessel or ureteric injury now coming to the rectovaginal space so the rectovaginal space is a space between the vagina and the rectum so similarly again if we see the ventral boundary is the posterior vaginal wall dorsal is the anterior rectal wall cranial is the peritoneal reflection of the pod caudally you have the levator and eye muscle that forms the pelvic floor laterally you have the uterosacral and the rectovaginal ligament and it is also known as the posterior cul-de-sac so there are two layers of the denonvillier fascia, one which covers the rectum and the other which covers the posterior vaginal wall. So this is uh, the rectovaginal space. So here you have the uterus and here is the rectum and this is the rectovaginal space. So it is important to stay between the two fascial layers in order to avoid vessel or rectal injury and vessel injury can occur in uh, from the middle rectal artery or vein vaginal veins and the presacral vein especially you have to be careful that you should stay within the space and stay uh, otherwise you there is a high chance of injuring the presacral vein again here the bleeding is uh, difficult to control because it is against the sacrum now coming to the presacral space or the retrorectal space so this is a space behind the rectum and in front of the sacrum so again the same thing ventrally you have the mesorectal fascia or the rectum dorsally is the sacrum cranially you have the peritoneal reflection of the rectosigmoid colon uh, colon sorry uh, caudally you have the pelvic floor laterally you have the right ureter or, or the left ureter and it is divided by the waldeus fascia into inferior and superior parts. So inferior and superior part, inferior retrorectal space and superior retrorectal space respectively. 
now let us look at a few questions which are being uh, which has been asked in your INISS exam so INISS exam recently they have been including questions from the anatomy part as well especially the uh, retroperitoneal anatomy the nerve sparing radical hysterectomy the spaces and all so you need to have a good idea because these questions are very obvious and very easy questions uh, there can be no uh, doubt regarding while you are answering these questions these are uh, this can be either right or wrong so these are usually mark fetching questions so please do not miss out on that which of the following is not correct regarding yabuki space it is a midline retroperitoneal space it has no peritoneal covering it is anterior to the uterus and it contains the sympathetic nerves so the answer is four it does not contain sympathetic nerves it contains the parasympathetic nerves rest all is all correct sacral promontory which of the following is the false statement small bowel mesentery crosses on its way to the left sacroiliac joint common iliac vessel bifurcates at this level superior hypogastric nerve plexus unites to form left and right hypogastric nerves at this level it is the initiation point for transperitoneal paraortic lymph node dissection the answer is a that is small bowel mesentery crosses on its way to the left sacroiliac joint this is the false state so let us look at the what is uh, what are the structures crossing or what is the importance rather of sacral promontory the common iliac vessels bifurcate at this level the ureter crosses from the lateral to the medial side it crosses ureter crosses from the lateral to the medial side over the bifurcation of the iliac vessels superior hypogastric nerve plexus unites to form the left and the right hypogastric nerves it also forms an initiation point for the transperitoneal paraortic lymph node dissection thank you so much for attending the session in case of any doubts uh, pertaining to this topic or any other topic please comment in the chat box or box below let us know in case you need any further help or any further videos on any topics which uh, which you want or which you find to be difficult and you want it to be discussed and we'll be glad to incorporate them in our next youtube series so thank you so much for attending do like and share the video in case you have liked them and do subscribe us so as to get a ready update to get a day or to get an update regarding the new videos thank you so much